From the Sun. .co.uk, Private Eye, Britain's first private police force, has 100% conviction rate and is now investigating murder and rape. And it, kind of like, I told you so. Um, I hate to say I told you so, but in this case, I really love to say I told you so. I wish I didn't have to say I told you so so many times, but this is just what I've been predicting that when we have the resources available and the legal latitude to create private security uh, that is more accountable to the people it's serving, we're immediately gonna have better alternatives. And yes, it's true that right now you can say this is only available to the, the, the wealthiest, but the kind of stuff we're talking about for security is, is going to continue to grow and develop and blossom into so much more to the point that I think it's gonna include a lot of what we would call charity today, which is just taking care of, of, of people in need who might be desperate enough to commit crimes, it becomes, this is, this is where you see uh, the market properly address the problem of homelessness, uh, if nothing else, as, as a security threat, that we, it's, it's worth it for all of us in the interest of our own security to not let our fellow human beings be desperate, and that, that in the market we can provide better means for that. So anyway, that's, that's my next prediction built into this, uh, baked into this little one, and I, I just want to, you know, encourage people to see this not as like ah that we've got to this triumph and here's what it is but that this is part of a continual process so the firm britain's first has successfully prosecuted more than 400 criminals and is led by former scotland yard senior officers tmi and i i wonder if that's like a deliberate um faux pas of uh or i mean not faux pas but uh, deliberate double entendre built into this of tmis and too much information I hope not. TMI is now believed to bring more private convictions than any other organization except for the RSPCA, Daily Mail reports. The company has a service called My Local Bobby, the British slang for police officer, which costs wealthy homers around 200 pounds a month and involves a guard patrolling their streets. So really not that much. And I'm sure part of the effect already is that there, there's a bleed over, that because that, this is what you would want, right? If you had paid this much for a private police officer to patrol your, your block, to walk right around your house, you would, you would want them to, like, if they saw something, I don't know, I mean, maybe you would want them to keep an eye on your house at all times, but that if there were other problems in the neighborhood, you would want those addressed as well with those resources. And it looks like that's what's happening. So. Uh, TMI are also looking three murder cases at uh, looking at three murder cases that cops were unable to solve and are helping out in rape, missing persons, burglary, theft, stalking, and blackmail cases. In two years, the company has successfully successfully convicted 403 criminals for fraud, intellectual property theft, and other offenses. Now, in this case, I would have to disagree with the basis of intellectual property uh, as a basis for theft, but I understand in, in today's paradigm that still having uh, Private institutions handle uh, the, 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 the false idea, the, the government racket that is intellectual property as a concept that it'd be better as a private institution than by government, certainly. So police forces are becoming increasingly stretched and say they no longer have the money to investigate some crimes such as shoplifting. But it is feared private policing will see only the rich get protection from private officers. The newspaper reports Metropolitan Police Federation Chairman Ken Marsh said, eventually there will be a two-tier system with the haves and the have-nots, and if you have money and live in a 20 million, 20, 20 million pound house in Chelsea, you can pay for private security. My concern would be, where is the public scrutiny if it goes wrong, if they're allowed to go and do police's jobs for them? That is a dangerous status quo. No, the dangerous status quo is allowing the government to take responsibility for private safety issues. That's, that's why we have the drug war. That's what really screws poor people. Like, you, you really have to be inhumane to say, well, because of poor people, we need government to handle public safety and to be the police. And it's like, oh no, you were like either you're, you're blind, a shill, paid off, delusional, or, or just a sucker, I, I don't know what. But it, it is, it is a, from the perspective of, of just of, of, of sympathy for poor people, you know, have, having been poor, having, you know, been on, on the edge myself, like, no, n no, in, in no way does having government handle public safety, if you want to call it that, or, or justice services help poor people. That's not what government is for. It never will be. Sometimes, yes. It can help poor people as a, a way of justifying its taxation that obviously is overall intended to serve the wealthy, the, the sponsors, the political class. It, it, you have to be blind to not see that. 
Figures show the firm has 36 criminal cases currently awaiting a result at UK courts. So obviously you see they're not properly fully operating independently of government because they, they, they are still under that legal framework. Um, in six months, 60 investigators have caught suspects wanted by cops for attempted murder and rape. They have also managed to smash a major counterfeit goods gang using undercover operatives. So that's the intellectual property thing. Uh, they don't charge for investigative services, but recoup costs from the courts if offenders are convicted. Now, this is where in, in the, the government law enforcement system has gotten uh, so ineffective at this and that they're not taxing people so much that they can't afford this entirely, that at least some people can. That there is this space where uh, a, a private firm can make a legitimate profit providing legitimate services. It, we, we see hints of this in the United States, like in Detroit, where uh, a lot of police services have really just entirely broken down. And you know, we see it in the general trend towards uh, private security, where it's possible, where it's available. But you know, generally, we, we, the need is more to get rid of the police officers enforcing crimes that are contrary to the natural law, unjust. Uh, laws. If, there's, if there is no victim, there is no crime. So victimless crimes. And, and again, while I have my dispute about intellectual property here, uh, by and large, what you're going to see is that as we get more privatized security and public safety is that it's, they're only enforcing crimes that have victims because only there is there that opportunity for a legitimate profit to be made. I mean, it'd be really hard to say, you know, give me a, a you know, I'm gonna, give me a thousand pounds so that I can go bust someone for marijuana and lock them in a cage and ruin their life. It just doesn't work that way. So, um, rich clients shilling out up to 200 pounds a month are given a meet and greet service from the car or tube and have a hotline straight to their officer who can respond to crime in five minutes. The firm's managing director, David McKelvey, a retired Scotland Yard detective chief inspector, said. We probably do more undercover work than any other law enforcement agency. We have a better surveillance capability and equipment than most forces. It's about catching the bad guys and protecting the public, and we can help with that. Police are on their knees, sick to the teeth with what is going on in their job. The bottom line is we have better uniforms, better pay, and better support at work. It's a huge growth industry. So uh, what you see then at the end, just from that last paragraph, is that the, the, the economic situation, at least in, in Britain, has shifted so much that they are now able to say we can pay you better when you're doing this and i can't wait until we hit this point in the united states where we have uh, enough well organized private police forces that they can say to a cop working for the government hey look you, you might be making decent money and getting smoke blown up your butt and all this appreciation and, and and pomp and ribbons and medals and crap like that but we're going to pay you better we're going to have you on a better plan and you're not going to have to enforce uh, enforce drug war laws you're not going to have to enforce any victimless crime laws. You're going to actually get to serve and protect. Man, won't that be a beautiful America? Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions including DTube, and you can find that through steamit.com, as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.